Hello everyone and welcome to Mountain Lake Journal. I'm Tom Halleck. We've been telling you for months about a new threat to Lake Champlain, an invasive fish that's been making its way from the Great Lakes and Erie Canal across New York to the Mohawk and Hudson Rivers just within the past few years. And now the round goby has reached the Champlain Canal and started working its way upstream. The goby is still a good 55 or 60 miles from the southern tip of Lake Champlain, but there is so much concern about the impact it could have on the lake's ecosystem that environmental groups like the Lake Champlain Basin Program have teamed up with New York State and federal agencies to not only track its movement, but look for a way to try to block the round goby and other invasive species from using the canal as a route to invade Lake Champlain. For Scott George and his crew, the morning begins bright and early on this hot August day in Fort Edward. Near lock seven as they throw a large net into the water and methodically cover mapped out sections of the Champlain Canal, trawling the river and checking to see what kind of fish they pull in from the depths of the canal. That's gonna be a smallmouth bass. A few more popping out, a couple darters. Yes. And more importantly, along with the bass and the darters that are common here, is what they didn't see. Any sign of a round goby, one of these fish that in just the past few short years have made their way from the Great Lakes and Erie Canal to the Hudson River last summer, and now this summer to the very southern end of the Champlain Canal. We did not find any goby, um, and that's consistent with our current understanding of where the, you know, the invasion front of round goby is. Huge river here, we're only sampling small isolated pockets, so the absence of any captures is certainly not conclusive evidence, but nonetheless, uh, you know, we did not find any today. And that's a good sign. If you're not finding them, that's good. It is. Um, again, you know, it's by no means conclusive, but I mean, it's better than the alternative, right? We know that. A little more. Twice this summer, U.S. Geological Survey crews have trawled the bottom and scoured the shallow shoreline. This electrofishing backpack, collecting fish that are then taken ashore and identified and cataloged before being released back into the river. Tessellated darter, smallmouth, tessellated darter. Obviously looking for the presence or absence of round goby is, you know, the first and foremost objective, but we're also trying to get information on the community that's here presently um, because it's obviously entirely possible if round goby were to reach this area, you know, we might expect significant changes in that community. So we're looking at the, the native uh, benthic or bottom dwelling fish like our darters uh, really closely. And while it's harder for a small fish to migrate upstream, the goby has made it to lock C1 in Waterford. Crews have found both their DNA that's turned up in water samples as well as actual fish found near the lock. We have seven sites spanning from Fort Edward down to Waterford at the confluence with the Mohawk and Hudson River. Um, we have uh, these traditional fish surveys you're seeing here. We conducted those in June. We're obviously doing them again here in August. Um, and those were also paired with environmental DNA samples. Um, we're also taking environmental DNA samples. Um, we took them in April. We'll be taking them again in October as well. Currently, our data from June, the two methods are aligning um, you know, flawlessly. We're not capturing goby, nor are we detecting DNA anywhere upstream of the Lock C1 dam. Round goby are believed, of course, to have come through the Mohawk River, reaching the Hudson, first documented in summer 2021. We've, our DEC partners in particular, have shown they've moved extensively down the estuary as far as Poughkeepsie or, or Newburgh. Um, but the upstream expansion, you know, going north towards Lake Champlain, that's really what we're focused on with our partnership with the Lake Champlain Basin Program. And, you know, to date, we've only been able to document about three miles of upstream expansion. And moving upstream is obviously a lot more difficult for a small bottom-dwelling fish than it is to move downstream. This is around the one-year anniversary of when we became aware that round goby were in the, the Hudson. And, you know, how quickly they can move upstream is obviously the real hot question that folks want to know about. You know, you see estimates between half a kilometer and maybe three or four kilometers a year, sometimes quoted as a rate of expansion moving upstream, but um, it, we're too young in this work here to really have any sense as to how quickly they're, they're moving here. But, you know, you might infer that they've gone about at least three miles in the course of about a year based on the limited data that's there, but even that is, you know, just an estimate.
More DNA samples will be taken next month, which will conclude the testing and sampling for this year. Long-range plans include building a barrier to keep Golbys and other invasives from getting from the canal into Lake Champlain. And until one is built, New York's DEC is working with the Canal Corporation and environmental groups to take other steps to try to keep invasive species out. We continue to conduct ongoing survey work and I think that work will be ongoing for years. So um, it's gonna be really important to us in managing the spread and the movement of the Gobi to know exactly where they are. And so far what we've seen has not been a movement north, a progression north up the Champlain Canal, which is very good news. But as I said, it'll be really important to continue to conduct the survey work, both looking for actual Gobi and um, eDNA samples of evidence of Gobi. We have been employing some measures through our partners, um, the New York Power Authority and Canal Corporation who operate the canal and the lock to limit the schedule of openings and to double flush the lock to help prevent the spread of any fish really through the lock when it's open. We are still studying and trying to understand how effective that double flushing system is and the scheduled locks are, uh, closures are. But right now, the fact that we're not seeing progression north um, is a good thing, certainly.